Hey boys and girls, welcome to Kids Connection! My name is Johnny, I am your host for the program today. And this is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. <sighs> Mr. Zorik is not available today, so he asked me to host the program one more time. <sighs> and I am so happy! I am so happy to see you, and I'm so happy because today is Sabbath, and I'm so happy because today we are going to have a special program, and I am going to be uh, be making baking a cake right here in Kids Connection program, so I get to share that with you guys, okay? So stick around, and let's get another program started. But to get our program started today, we're going to be talking about something very important. But before that, let's get our song of the day. I have decided to follow Jesus. Sing with us. song did you like it good 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 well i invite you to bow your head so we can talk to jesus now dear jesus thank you so much for this beautiful sabbath we ask that you be with us as we worship your name today be with all the boys and girls in jesus name we pray amen well kids welcome to kids connection i am johnny your host for today and let me tell you a secret. I want to buy a boat. Don't tell anybody. Yes, I want to buy a boat. A boat. Yes, a boat. You know why? Well, I want to buy a boat so I can do what these missionaries are doing all the way in the Amazon River in Brazil. Let's watch our missionary story where they have a church on the boat. The 
Amazon River is a source of food and income for many. As you travel along the river, you can see many communities along the banks. Here you will find one quarter of our planet's fresh water supply. That's why boats are necessary for transportation. There are entire communities with either no knowledge of the Bible or no churches. Adventist here found a fitting way to reach more than 10,000 communities. Thanks to your past contributions to the 13th Sabbath offering, the Floating Church was built. This custom boat is a church that carries the pastor's family. It often works alongside the Adra Luzero boats to provide health care and hope to people. The main goal behind the Floating Church project is to reach places we typically find hard to visit. The Floating Church offers an infrastructure for a pastor or Bible worker, a captain, and others to live aboard. There's also an auditorium where people from the community can come to listen to the Word of God. The Floating Church has an auditorium that seats 120 people. It's a comfortable space for people to come and learn about God. I know what difficulties they face and how hard it is for the gospel message to reach the distant communities along the Amazon River. This touched me in a special way. I was moved by the prospect of this project. It was encouraging to imagine how far this boat could go to reach the Riverside families. This boat also has onboard apartments for the crew. Reno Guerra is both the pastor and the captain of the boat. He and his wife, Natalia, accepted God's call to bring hope and healing to the region. As soon as the boat docks, it's received with a lot of joy. People are happy to see the floating church because it is a beautiful and unique boat. Pastor Reno sounds the horn to catch the attention of the people who come curiously to look. So the pastor invites the people to a church program. He enters a community where the work already has begun and calls the people to come inside the floating church. The boat is usually docked for 60 days as they talk about family, health, and community well-being. In the first year of service, two new churches were established through the floating church. This past June, the Gutierrez Church opened as a result of the missionary project. This is the first daughter church plant of the Floating Church Project. The church that floats is the mother of all the traditional church structures that are built along the banks of the Amazon River. Indeed, miracles are happening along the Amazon. We noticed that this project changes what people think about God and about the Adventist Church. There is change in their society. People become calmer, happier, more content and united. The church helps the community to realize how they can work together as one body to develop social projects for themselves. I believe many souls will be reached through this boat. This boat can reach places where even radio signals don't travel to reach hearts. We pray that this will be managed and used well for the gospel to reach the farthest places in the Amazon. We have the opportunity to navigate rivers and oceans as part of our mission to reach unreached people groups. Please pray for the floating church and the many missionaries involved in flooding the Amazon with hope. And thank you for supporting projects like these through the 13th Sabbath offering. Okay, okay, well, maybe not buying a boat, but one way that I can help is with my offerings. Don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link so they can too help the missionaries with the offerings. Thank you for your support. Kids, today I am excited to host the program because I want to show you that I can bake a cake. Do you guys 
help mom and dad bake and cake sometimes? Is it fun? Yes, I know it is. So let me get a couple of ingredients and I'm gonna bake a cake right here in Kids Connection. Hold on. First, first, I'm gonna bring the flowers here. Hold on, let me get the eggs. I gotta be careful. Here comes the eggs. Perfect, perfect. Well, let's see what else. Uh, yes, yes, I am missing the cake mix. Hold on. Here it is, the box with the instructions. So now all I have to do is follow the instructions. Let me get a bowl. Okay, so here is a bowl. Let's go ahead and get it started. Let me bring the bowl close to the table here. Here we go, here we go. Okay, so now it tells me that I need to get some flour. So here is the flour. Let me, let me get some. too much flour but it's okay because I like to make my own recipe okay so now it tells me that I need two eggs well I think two eggs is too much so I'm going to go and put one egg Was I supposed to crack the egg first? Well, it doesn't say here in the instructions to crack the egg. So, I guess not. Just the egg. Uh, let's see. Put butter. I, I don't have butter. Well, I guess it's okay for me to bake this cake without butter. Okay, so now let me, let me get my bowl, mixing bowl. Okay, so now the instructor says, go ahead and beat for two minutes. Beat. Okay, let's beat this thing. I wonder why it tells me to beat it. Let's see, yeah, beat for two minutes. So this is the best I can do. Beating, 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 beating. Beating, beating, oh yes. Okay. So, hmm, that's strange. It doesn't look like a cake, but, oh well. I, I, I didn't follow all the instructions as it said on the box, but let's, let's see what happens. So, let's see. After beating for two minutes, Take it to the oven. Okay, kids. Wait. 
It's telling me to put chocolate inside. But I don't have chocolate. Well, I guess I'm going to make a chocolate cake without a chocolate and without butter because I don't have it. Take it to the oven. Let's see what happens. Oh, by the way, kids, look at my cake. Beautiful. Uh, I think it's going to be a little crunchy because of the egg. But it's okay. I'll be right back. Uh, kids, I got bad news. My chocolate cake without chocolate and without butter did not turn out so good. No! Why, why, why? Why did my chocolate look like that? After all this hard work, my chocolate cake without chocolate looks like this. I can't believe it! Why do you think my chocolate cake without chocolate didn't turn out good? Well, I, I follow somewhat the instructions in the box. I put the, some of the ingredients inside the bowl and I beat it for two minutes, then I took it to the oven. That, well, okay, I, okay, I, okay. I guess it, it's not telling, I, I guess it's not telling me to do just that. Oh, there are other things that I didn't do. I guess I didn't follow all the instructions. Do you think it's good to follow instructions? Why do we follow instructions to bake a cake? Do you follow instructions when baking a cake with mom and dad? It is important. Well, I guess I learned my lesson today and I have to follow instructions to make sure the cake is going to turn out just right. In today's story, in our lesson, we are going to learn about some instructions given to some people and how important it was for them to follow those instructions. Boys and girls, before we get to our story, let's sing our song of the day one more time. Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. 
because I have decided to follow Jesus. Following the instructions in the Bible is to follow Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the instructions that you give us in your Bible. I pray that all the boys and girls follow these instructions because you know what's best for us. Keep us safe. Mom, Dad, and all the boys and girls, help us to learn more about you in our lesson today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our Kids Connection program, kids. Next week, Mr. Zorik is going to be here and he's going to lead the Kids Connection program. But I have some announcements to make. The first one is that today, our worship service in our church is going to be by Zoom. Yes, by Zoom. Pastor James, Pastor Ben, Pastor Linda, and Pastor Lauren, they are all going to be live on Zoom. And they're going to talk to people. And everyone is going to participate. Mom, dad, grandpas, grandmas, aunts, uncles, everybody. Now, something very special, boys and girls. I am going to be there too. Yes. Johnny is going to participate in our program today. You are going to have a special part there too. So ask mom and dad that you want to meet Johnny in our worship service Zoom today. Just go to graceunconditional.com online worship service and click on the Zoom link at 11 o'clock so we can be a part of our worship service together and you will have a chance to talk to me live in our zoom worship today at 11 o'clock <sighs> i hope to see you in zoom okay now our friend kid is going to visit some kids this afternoon mr zorik is going to take him and make a couple of stops today. We will show you some of the clips next week of his visit to some kids this afternoon. Okay, so come back next week and watch kids visit some kids. Okay? Do you like happy birthday parties? I love happy birthday parties. And I love when people, when people sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you! Yes, I love birthdays. And this week, we have a special birthday celebration. Miss Teresa, the Tiny Tots teacher, is having a birthday this week. Don't forget to give her a call and wish her a happy birthday. And if you are having a birthday, send us an email and let us know so we can to wish you a happy birthday. VD Kids Connection at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you so much for participating in our Kids Connection. And I will see you guys some other time. Tune in again next week for another Kids Connection program with Mr. Zori. Until then, God bless you all. Bye bye. I'll see you kids at 11 o'clock worship on Zoom. Bye bye. I'll see you soon. Bye. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. My name is Teacher Kelly. You're going to grab your Bibles today. We are going to spend some time in 1 Thessalonians again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We are going to learn how to walk as God commands. <laughs> Children, God. 
to God. God made us, right? Only he knows what is best for us. And he tells us in the Bible. When we live according to God's instructions, not only are we glorifying God, but we find much greater happiness. When we live how the rest of the world is living, that happiness can be very temporary. Your wealth and your riches and your money can just be gone. You know, your possessions can burn up in a fire. Look at us now with the coronavirus, right? We thought life was going pretty good, but now we have to realize, wait, this earth is not gonna save us. Only God can save us. And because we love him and we wanna please him, we want to live a life that will show others who God is through us. Okay, so I have a very nice looking Bible here. It's like, looks brand new. I, we do use it a lot, but we keep it in, in good condition. And then we have this Bible over here that is falling apart. I got it when I was like in fourth or fifth grade. It's very special to me. It has a little zipper and it was my first Bible of my own and my mom had my name engraved on it. So this is a very special Bible. And it has teeny tiny print that only I could read as a kid. I'm not sure I could read it now. So this Bible is very special to me, but it's very old. More pleasing to the eye, I would probably choose the newer looking Bible. But you know what? They both contain the same information in here. It all talks about Jesus and how much he loves us from the very beginning. But this book here really shows that I've actually used the Bible a lot. And I have read it and I try to obey it and I try to think about what is in the Bible. And we're gonna do that today in 1 Thessalonians together. We should study the Bible every day. So our craft will help you do that this week. Before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your Bible so we can read it and live as you need us to live to show others about your love. And please help us to learn how to walk as you command. Please help the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and our lives that we can be lights of the world for you. Please bless every single child and family watching today. And those not watching, please continue to keep us safe and protected and help us to depend on you in all things. And thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to make a little booklet and we're going to use it as our Bible journal for the week. So you're going to need two sheets of white paper and you're going to fold them in half one way and then you're going to fold it in half another way. So you're going to do this to both sheets of paper. And then you're going to cut down the middle. And then you're going to tuck this one inside the other one. And you're going to do the same thing with the other sheet of paper. And these sheets are going to go inside this other one in the middle. And now we have a little booklet and we're going to hold it together with a staple. We're going to staple it together twice. One on the top, one on the bottom here. And we have our little booklet. And this booklet is going to be for First Thessalonians. So, I have one made here. You can write one Thessalonians. That's a big word to spell. And then we're going to study together chapter five. For the craft today, we're gonna write down all the information you need to know but every day this week, so on Monday, you're gonna study and think about and pray over the first page. And then on Tuesday, you're gonna go over the second page. 
so you can think about how does it apply to your life? How does it apply to me personally? And how does it apply to you personally? You're gonna think about it. Or to your family, or are there things you can improve on, or things you can change um, as we go through Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter. Thessalonians was written by Paul, and he went all over the world preaching about Jesus. And he's writing to this church of Thessalonica, Thessalonica, Thessaloniki, Thessalonici. I'm not exactly sure how to say it, they all might be right, but um, just because I have an American accent, I'm gonna say Thessalonica. He was telling them and encouraging them how to treat each other the best way. It's important for us today too. So we're gonna go to 5.13. So you're gonna write 5.13 on the top in a marker, and we're going to read it together. 1 Thessalonians 5.13 says, Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. So live in peace with each other. Get along with each other, right? Getting along with each other. That's difficult to do because not all of us do get along. There are multiple different personalities and there's a lot of great qualities and a lot of not so great qualities in everybody's personality. So we have to figure out how do we get along with each other so we're not fighting when we need to be spending our time and energy loving God and spreading his message of Jesus. So Paul is saying to lift each other up. Rather than saying something negative like, oh, you only read one text of the Bible today, that makes somebody feel really bad. But if you flipped it over onto the positive side and said, wow, you read one verse of the Bible today? Great job. How about tomorrow we read two? Big difference, right? I wouldn't want to be tapped down upon or put be put down. So we gotta figure out how can we say things to lift each other up in our words and we'll get along with each other much better. Because if somebody came to me and said, you only read one text in the Bible today, then I wouldn't feel like I would like that other person very much. So, and they wouldn't like me very much, obviously the way they're talking to me. So how you change things around and make them positive is a big difference that we can do in our lives. So on Monday, you're gonna think about what that means and you can ask your parents to help you and sit there with your Bible and pray about it. What does it say? How do we obey it? How can we apply it to our own life? Okay, that's Monday, right? Now on Tuesday, we are going to study 1 Thessalonians 5.14. 1 Thessalonians 5.14. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. There's going to be people who aren't on the same level as us. They're not gonna be as quick to learn. They're not gonna be as strong in what the scriptures say. They're not going to be moving forward. So we kind of have to Push them gently and be patient with them and encourage them at the same time. Lots of times I try to rush Cody out of the door because he's just messing around and not paying attention. And that makes him upset and then we all get upset. So I have to figure out how could I encourage him to move along faster but without making him upset. So that's, that's my idea of something I can, I can do so I can show patience and we can still make it to on time and I don't upset him because we're different personalities and we all need to get along. So I have to just change my own behavior in order to help somebody else. So that's something to think about on Tuesday. There is a song I learned as a kid it goes like this. It's really slow paced because it's about being patient, right? It goes, 
Be patient. Don't be in such a hurry. Remember that God has patience too. And think of all the other times he has to wait for you. So then on Wednesday, we are going to study 1 Thessalonians 5.16. It says, be joyful always. Wow, be joyful always. How can we be joyful when somebody we know and love may be sick with the coronavirus? Or how can we be joyful when we're stuck in our homes? Or somebody you know is dealing with cancer or some other sickness? How can we be joyful when sometimes this earth is really rough? How am I supposed to be joyful? Because Jesus wins. Jesus has overcome this world for us so that when we're taken to heaven, there will be no more sickness, no more sadness, no more suffering. That is the reason we are to be joyful. Because no matter what happens to us on this earth, God wins. It's hard to deal with many things on this earth, but his eternal life for us has never changed. We still have eternal life. We just have to get through this life, and this book will help us get through it. Because even if we are sick or hurting, God still has saved us and forgives us, even still. That's why we need to be joyful. Okay, so then the next day, we are going to read what it tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. It's another good one. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray continually, pray all of the time. That's very important because, you know, many times we make our own plans and we don't pray about it. And then we're like, why did that plan not go well? Well, we forgot to put it in God's hands. So we have to think about, I'm going to pray about everything. Anytime I get upset, I'm going to pray about it. Anytime I feel happy, I'm going to pray about it. Anytime I need to praise God, I'm going to sing my praises and pray about it. Anytime I'm feeling sad or scared, I'm going to pray about it. The best thing to do to continue our relationship with God is to pray. The more we pray, the more we feel God's presence in our life. And he'll show us in many different ways. Let's pray all the time. Okay, and then on the next day, we're going to read 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and it says here, give thanks. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Bad things do happen to good people, and we're going to give thanks again because he still has given us eternal life that never goes away. Whether we are healthy or sick, whether we're happy or sad, all of those circumstances, God has saved us. That is why we give thanks to Jesus. And the next day, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, avoid every kind of evil. Stay away from evil. If it looks evil, turn away from it. If you think it might be kind of good, but might be evil, go away from it. If you think you can help it, go away from it. Pray first, and if God leads you to it, you know you're going through, through something with prayer. But you gotta stay safe. You don't wanna fall into the things of this world. Jesus has saved us from this evil place. Let us not become like this evil place. 
You know, sugar for me was a big evil in my life. It changed my attitude, it made me moody and irritable. So that was an evil and it was in everything I ate. So think about something that might be a little evil in your life. Something that may cause you to fight with your parents or your brother or sister. Um, you know, some things like video games aren't necessarily evil in themselves, but if it causes fighting, it could become something evil. So we want to think about what might be something, anything causing sadness in our life. And let's pray about it. So this is your little journal for the week and you can write down anything else that comes to your mind about something you might do to obey the text or to think about the text. So I wanna tell you about Cody, Dylan, and I went to Descanso Gardens one day and Cody found this most beautiful colored rose. Here it is. Not only was the appearance of this rose absolutely beautiful, but its scent was the best smell I have ever smelled in my life. The name of this rose is called Oranges and Lemons. We couldn't stop smelling it. It was just incredible. And this was something God created for us here on the earth. We had some fun at Descanso Gardens. We left for a whole week. We came back. First thing we did was go for that rose. There wasn't a single rose left. They had all died. And we were sad about it. We went on and found some other fun things that God has made for us. And then Cody decided to pray that when we returned the next week, there would be a rose for us to smell. And sure enough, there was. There were two roses left, barely hanging on, but well enough for us to smell them. We thanked God for sending us that rose to smell again. And you know what else we've been doing? We've been going to the beach a lot more often and as I was watching Cody and Dylan running around at the water's edge and having so much fun, Cody just couldn't stop jumping up and down in excitement and running around and just enjoying the shore. I, w I looked around and saw all these people enjoying God's creation and I wondered if God looks down on us and he's pleased. He, he's pleased because we're enjoying what he created for us. But it would be more pleasing to God if we shared his messages of love with others. So what can we do for others to be a light for God? Pastor Linda in the newsletter has set up a calendar in August of great activities we can do for others, like making a card for someone, leaving a water or bringing ice cream to your mailman. So you could discuss that with your family, what text you could send to lift up each other, encourage one another, like Paul tells us to do, especially during these times that are very uncertain. But we're going to praise God, love God, and serve God. We serve God by serving others. And that is true worship. You have a good week. I'll see you later. Bye.